Hi, welcome back to Colesky Drones. So today we've got the JDRC JD65, which is the optical flow altitude hold drone. This has been sent to me from Bangus. Thank you very much for sending me this out. The link will be down below if you want to purchase it. Let's have a look at what you get in the box. In the box you get the manual and how to unfold the arms, which is quite key for. I'll show you that in a second. So in the packet you get the controller, the drone itself. So in here you've got the charging cable, which is a proprietary charging cable. It plugs into a USB, but the battery plugs into this and charges. So you have to have this to charge it. What the charge from USB plugs in like that. You plug it into a USB and then it'll indicate how much battery power it's got in. It does have an indicator in there to show you. You can see that? It's a one bar at the minute, so it's a quite flat battery. So again, quite a nice charger. Doesn't charge that bad, actually. It takes about an hour and a half to charge the battery. You get a spare set of props, which I'll show you in a minute how they work. And you do get an SD card reader. because it takes an SD card. You get no SD card with it and the screwdriver. So, let me just get rid of this off the bench. Let me show you the drone first. So, this is the drone. It's very nicely finished off actually. It's got folding arms. So the back, ar the back arms fold up like that. So have you seen it? They'll come up like that. You've got to be careful with them. It is quite ratchety and it does feel a bit weird when you first do it but I've had no issues with it. The tops, uh, the black is like a rubber coated kind of thing and then it's got this gunmetal silver look about it. Underneath you have the same type of battery because this one came with two Banggood sent me to it. You can buy through one, two or three batteries. And again underneath you've got turn it on or you can tell how much battery power you've got in. I love the way the battery clips in. You pull this little thing back here and pull the battery out. Inside here you have an SD card reader holder. You can see that there. Really nice, easy to get to, and there your pins for your battery. What I like about this is the, how easy the battery is to get in and out. There you have an optical flow sensor there, and it has an adjustable 1080p camera. So the camera is adjustable from the controller itself. What I also like about it is the props, so, so you just push down and they pop off with a spring underneath which doesn't fall out, which is nice and then the props simply go back into the spring and into these two little slots and lock in. Great design. Nothing better, nothing better than having not to use a little screwdriver in the field. Fantastic, looks really nice. Like I say, it folds well. These arms, if you can hear they have got, um, they're not just slide out, they've got some kind, of, some kind of mechanism in there that captures to stop it falling back on itself so the arms just don't drop back. But they would go back if you had a crash. So the controller is your typical type of controller. And if you watch the channel, you know, I don't particularly like these. Fake antennas yet again. The phone holder's underneath here. But this one actually comes out much easier than most of them do. Phone goes in there, I'll show you the app in a minute, and then you've got your controller. So let's just turn it on. So these fold out here. Let's put that down there. Let's just turn it on. Okay, so that's it bound. So a typical way of buying it. What I love about this one is if I hold this button here. If you use the button with a little square on, that's put it into mode one. Let's put it back into mode two. I love the fact that I can change modes on it. Absolutely fantastic. So, then you've got your normal throttle up and down, your left and right, forwards and backwards, and then bank. You've got take off and land buttons on here, headless mode button on here, speed rates on here, we have one, two and three. 
that's your camera short press for photo long press for video remember on the SD card if you press them on the phone app I believe it records to your phone and then here we have you see those buttons here they make your gimbal go up and down so these two here have a gimbal up and down I prefer, I must admit, I think I mentioned on the video, I don't particularly like that, I like wheels on the side but I suppose these things are built for a price so it's not going to have them. So on to the most important bit, what does it fly like? You're going to see the footage coming up, I've recorded it with my GoPro and I've also recorded some footage from the camera. You can't judge the camera too much, I live in the UK so the weather's horrendous here so it's really dull and it doesn't particularly like low light but you make your own mind up. But it is 1080 and it does record to the card. I have no issue with it recording to the card. Sometimes you get these where you have to mess around to get a card to work. So I've tried three different, three different cards, three different cards all worked. It's bright in the air, you can see these LEDs from a distance which is good. You can really see them, so you're not going to get a problem not being able to see it. You'll be able to see that from watching the video I've got as well. And you make your own mind up about the camera. So let me have a quick, let's have a quick look at the app. So when you connect this to Wi-Fi, you need to find XBM 1080p. Let it connect. If by the way this comes up 720, it means you've got a 720p version. Come out of there. And then the app is XBM UFO. So this is your standard kind of app. So in here you've got your settings. So you can adjust fine tune parameters, reset fine tune parameters, right hand mode. So if you're flying it with the phone, you can change it to mode one. And then preview HD. Do you want the preview to come back in HD to your phone? Not really certain it makes that much of a difference. And then here you can go into play. So these are the two, I know it says XBM65, this thing's got a few different names. Click that one, and there you have it. So as you can see, it has a bit of lag, but it's not too bad at all. And you can see the picture quality on the phone is actually very good. So at the top you've got your typical stuff, camera, video, mode, look at your pictures you've already got. Flight with the phone controls. So you can fly it with the app if you wanted to do such a thing. And then you can fly it with tilt by pressing that button if you look at the, the moving about. So that's your gyro mode. And then if you go into here you have these again. So if flight 3D you can have it with your 3D goggles on. Um, and have it VR look I suppose. I'm not sure. I've never ever done that to be honest. I'm not sure how well it would work. I need to maybe have a go at that. So yeah, it's your typical app. Remember it'll record and save to your phone if you use these features here. So that's the app. So, like I said, when you watch a flight footage, you're going to see it fly. The only thing detrimental I'd say about this, flying wise, is mode 3 is a little bit twitchy. And I've seen this before on a lot of drones. When you've got, mode 3 is just too quick for it. There's nothing wrong with the way, it, if it's slowing it down, mode 3 will be fine, it's just a bit quick. Mode 1, it's fine, mode 2, absolutely fantastic. I'd recommend all this day all along and flying this in mode 2. Mode 3, a bit twitchy. And that's because it's your rate's a bit fast. So if you're coming to, if you're coming down and you want to turn, it tends to do that because it's your rate's too much. Apart from that, yeah, it's a really nice flying drone. Like I say, the link's below if you want to check it out on Banggood. Enjoy the footage that's coming up. Thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. This is the footage taken from the GoPro and also inset you're going to see the video footage that's come out of the SD card. It records in 25 frames per second and it does film in 1080p. The flashing lights you can see on the drone underneath are not a battery warning, they tell you that it's recording, I forgot to mention that. So when you're recording the lights will flash underneath. The flight time I was getting was between 10 and 11 minutes, it says 14 on the box but it is very cold out there and there's a little bit of wind and I was messing around with my flight modes and I'm presuming they mean 14 minutes in mode 1 so it's probably not a million miles out.